There we go. We are not talking about Avatar. What a face, though. I know. Zula's crazy face. Talked about the weaves. I think I was trying to read this poem to you at one point. Asian Jesus. Um, meditation. I guess this is the scene you were talking about where you can hear a shameo. Yeah. 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 So if you go watch that, I think it's at 38 minutes, 20 seconds. It's uh, like as she's looking at that, you hear a shameo whispering. Oh, you. And old tongue. I I remember hearing a voice. I just didn't know that it was. Um, I didn't catch that it was Ishamael. No. So that's kind of like, and, and you see the look on their face. So for me, I should I should have been witty enough to put that together that they had pulled that out of Land's bag, and that Land took that from Moraine. But I just I hear Ishamael's voice. I see the look of like, you know, surprise and. Um, disbelief on their faces and I'm like did they just get an order to do something from a Shamael much like Leandrin just did I don't know maybe 10 minutes before this but uh yeah I could I totally know. see that I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hunt this black Aja down though I... good luck yeah <laughs> Especially if they add, it's going to be extra fun if they add more Aes Sedai uh, to next season. Because, like, yeah. his, historically there's, like, around 200. Um, so they they have pretty much all the freedom in the world to add as many uh, main, main characters or side characters or pretty much they got a huge uh, well to pull from of uh, people yeah. that are... Legit Aes Sedai and Black Aja, like there's quite a few. Um, I have some uh, suspicious. So I know you said we've we've had three on screen so far, and we've confirmed one within this episode. <clears throat> so there's two more that I'm missing. Right. Yes. And I don't know. I have a I have a a feeling that. One is in with the green Aja, like where uh, Lan and Moraine had stayed uh, after mm -hmm. she had been cut off from the One Power, like at the beginning of the season. Maybe that girl's sister. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and rewatch again. And then. Oh, you're talking about. In the tower. You're talking about Adelius. Is her is. I mean, it, you're right. It's just a brief on screen for like that couple episodes that they're stuck there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Adelius, Adelius is green, I think. And you're saying that there's got to be like one more in the tower somewhere. Yeah. So I, I kind of thrown out the headmistress of novice. Is that her title? Uh, yeah, the mistress of, of novices. Mistress of novices. Yeah. That'd be fucked up. It would be fucked up, but the only other person that I can think of that we've seen, if it's not Leon and, or Liana, and we've discussed the Mistress of Novices. We know Leandrin's one. Like, we're really running out, and that makes me think, like, who would be the most impactful Black Aja of them all? Right. I don't know. Maybe so, the Omerlin seat. So, like named named Aes Sedai, we've got um, we've got Swan, the Omerlin. We've got Liana, mm -hmm. the Keeper, uh, Moraine, <clears throat> um, Alana, the that's her on screen, and then Leandrin, Shiryam, the Mistress of Novices, 
and then Adelius and and uh, Varen. Like that's I think that's all the ones that are named in the show Adelius so far. Adelius and Varen. Who who yeah. so Adelius is the sister of Varen. Uh, they don't they don't show it on screen. Um she's she's technically a twin. Uh Adelius and Van Dean, but we don't see Van Dean on screen and they don't make a any kind of a hint that her sister is around somewhere. So I don't I don't know if they're gonna portray that she's a twin. Okay. So Adelius is the girl that was mooching off the girl who owned the home. Right, and I think that was uh Varen's house, maybe. Or uh, I'm house. or I'm mixing okay. up some story. Um but yeah the when Moraine and Lan were there and I think um like remember Moraine gets attacked by the by the fades and oh. it's yep. uh Varen and Adelius are the ones that save Moraine right there at the end. Mm -hmm. So I know they were there. I mean, it makes me think because like how else, I mean, I know the Fade can find them on his own, but it also, you know, wouldn't be hard for a dark friend that was there between Adelius and Varen if one of them is a dark friend to tell them that Lana Moraine is there. That's a good point. And then, you know, they just kind of show up in the middle of the night. That's some, uh, that's the critical thinking I sign up for. That's, that's why I'm here. I really want to go back and see if I could find in the dialogue, either one of them trying to, uh, not pressure land, but kind of, get him to separate himself from Moraine. You know what I mean? Like give her space or, or whatever, just push him to where he's not around Moraine and, and not protecting her, which would make her very easy for a fade to prey on. Mm. Well, the lead up to the lead up to the fade attack was both of them basically telling him that I think they're telling him like, you know what you need to do. You need to, you know, basically go be, go be meek because Moraine's such a strong person. Something to that effect. Um, yeah. I, that's what I, that's what I remember. I could be wrong, but that's what I remember. But what if both? <sighs> yeah. Cause I have numbers. I have information. I shouldn't. Now I'm trying to piece things together. Cause it's right. three. Could right. be both of them. Definitely right. think one is involved. To, for for me, it'd be was Adelia. I need to write her name down so I can. Ad yeah, Adelia. Get that locked in. Okay. So I definitely think that there's one involved there, and then it would make sense for them to be spread out. One would be in the tower, but we're running out of people in the tower. I mean, if it's not the mistress of novices, it's not Liana. It would have to be the Omerlin seat, but I remember I, I brought that up one time and you were like, stop, you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, and you got to understand that I don't want to tell you the answer. So, like, I'm a lot of, a lot of the times when you ask me those questions, I am knee jerking to try to figure out how to talk about the subject without giving anything specific away. Okay. So, um, I mean, uh, I, I don't even want to give any clues. Honestly, I will say that we have seen all three in the tower at one point, all three in the tower at one point. Okay. Not, not at the same time. I didn't say that, but they have all, shown their face at the tower before this point of this episode right here or including this season including both seasons so just all okay. all together like i i've known yeah. i've known who the black ajo people were from the moment i mm -hmm. saw them on screen yeah i just i'm thinking because i don't think i've seen varen in the white tower but then i remember her saying they're going to the white tower it, you know, I haven't rewatched mm -hmm. past this in a while, so That's I don't remember if I actually see her there or not. 
that's good thinking. Uh, just thinking about the the episode, like, and that's part of why, like, I don't want to give you too many clues because, like, the the them being secret is like part of their shtick. So if we give yeah. it if we give it away, it's if you figure it out, cool. But if it's it's kind of like the discussion about Inktar. Like, if you have pieced enough clues together from the show then and now you're convinced that's what i want i want you to figure not figure it out for yourself but like look at the clues and think about it critically and then we get to then we get to see the show unveil it and you get to feel proud <laughs> yeah well inktar is a fucking dark front for sure the uh, evidence is pointing that direction yeah and i think I we so. uh, i think you had a prediction about the white cloak dark friend also um i mean just just kind of based on how the just kind of based on how the show the season plays out you kind of like assume who it is but like just based i mean they're all kind of dicks almost everybody from the white cloak like organization are all dicks i told you i told you about a hot take i had about a white cloak guy you told me you thought it was Valdo. Valdo, the black guy. Yeah, I mean, it is very surprising how many uh, fate attacks happen when the group is in contact with these suspects, suspected dark fronts. Oh, that's good. Good show writing. Good show writing on their part, bro. And I, I feel like I don't I don't people yeah. I don't think people give give the you know, they change the show, blah 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 blah. But if you're piecing together that kind of stuff with just a little nudge from somebody who's read the books, um like that's so good. Like that's not a like that means that just average show watchers will see that if somebody's unveiled as a dark friend, it makes sense. And then they can go back and be like, Oh shit, look at all these clues. Look at them. Yeah. That, that, that's what I absolutely love about these shows. Like in a game of Thrones kind of concept, like I didn't have somebody like you that was very knowledgeable about the book as I was watching the show. So I watched it. I had the same kind of mentality where I'm trying to piece things together and I was right about, a good amount of things but i was wrong about a lot of stuff too and that was the fun part about watching the show and throughout the years you find things out but that's what was so great about the rewatchability of that show is because once you get to the ending and you you see how it all worked you go back and you're like it was right on my nose yeah i didn't see it they shove all that stuff in your face it's either like some object in the background or some something that they say that's in actuality a clue like a very big giant neon sign of a clue that you just don't have the you don't have the context for necessarily uh by the way uh the book i was reading that i finished earlier today not disappointed but i did predict the ending uh eight hours before i got to the end i knew what was going to happen i predicted it you feel good about that you kind of crestfallen that it happened the way you anticipated it? Oh no, the 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 ending was one of the best endings I've ever read in a book series. Period. Okay. Well, it was. It was. A, I praise. I predicted it, and I was a hundred percent happy that it ended that way. And I can't say that for a lot of books. So, uh, bravo to James Eilington is the author. So. We'll do. Yeah, uh, that one's gonna like you would have to like finish the Wheel of Time and all this other stuff, and then like spend, mm, I don't know, like six months reading it, probably. If I if I'm being really honest, it's like ninety hours worth of audio. The three books wow. together. The three books that's, together. That's into, okay. Oh, that's not too bad. About thirty a piece. Yeah. 20... Wheel of Time. I think like the one I'm in right now is like thirty. 38 no is it 50 um some of them are in the 40s i know that because uh, yours are I've, like 20 something at the moment 
Because I've got like 10 hours left yeah. of this book. Um, it's like yeah, I think it's like 30 some hours, but yeah. It's about on pace. Yeah. Yeah, those big giant epics are so fun to read, especially like I even I only read the first book and then I started another series and I had to stop the one that I started and go back and finish like go buy credits and buy the other two books because it was eating me alive. I was like, I got to know. I got to know what happens. I got to read it. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. It's, that's good. You got I, the bug. I got sucked in. Um, well, I'm currently sucked into figuring out who these fucking dark friends are. <laughs> I, I I'm hope... glad you reminded me about the White Cloak because I, I forgot about... Uh, why is his name blinking on me right now? Valda. I need like a whole roster sheet. Yeah, Valda. Yeah. I forgot we had talked about that. So Valda, I I genuinely think it's Adelius. 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 Um. Okay. Varen's just so sweet. But then again, like Moraine told her what she was doing, gave her the plans, and that would be a good way for a dark friend to be. Is a confidant to Moraine. I, I mean, you're you're like all these ideas are right, and you gotta like. I hope you appreciate that Robert Jordan thought the same thing. Like, what would be the best? Like, evil, evil on the surface is you picture like a guy that's holding a shield in front of his kids saving from a saving his kids from like a demon or something when and it's very black and white the demon's obviously evil blah 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 but this world that's that they're making a show about is all about like shades of gray and yeah. it's really i i hope they give it i hope they do it justice cuz uh and i think the tv show has some some opportunity to i mean because even like a shameo he's kind of he's kind of kooky but like what as what has he actually done to hurt somebody specifically other than try to convince people to join him like can you think of something specific well something on screen no but i don't know what's going on off screen it's true. But that's the kind of character development that I like in a show. Like another author that did it great was George R. R. Martin. Yes. Um, you know, where so many characters are both good and evil. There is no perfect good guy. There is no perfect bad guy. They play different roles depending on what's happened to them in their life. You my, know? my favorite character from Game of Thrones was uh, Varys. The uh the eunuch. Yes. Yeah. His uh he what was did, mine too. What did he call him? The little birdies? His little birdies? Yeah, his his little Yeah, his like little spider network. Yeah, I couldn't remember if there's birdies or spiders. He had like a nickname for his little spy network. And Yeah, no, I think he called them individually like like birdies, but he called it like a web. Like his spy network right. was like a web, like a spider web. Yeah, um, it's honestly terrifying when you think about like the complexity of what he did. Uh, and we yeah. got, we just got a hundred percent sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's the fun of this stuff. Yeah, yeah I love uh, it. I love they it. Make it fun. So I'm on to Adelia. She's next. I've already pretty much put the nail in Inktar's coffin. Um, we've got con confirmed fate attacks. Uh, I caught on to it whenever he was talking about sympathy right. for Pat and Fane. Right. Um, I've got I've got a few pieces of uh, evidence that I'm putting in his locker. Next is Adelius or Varen, either one. I'm kind of sussy about them both, but to be honest, I like Adelius less, so I want it to be her. But I feel like because I'm led to like her less, they're doing that on purpose. Right. You know, another... We shall see. Another uh, complication for the show is that 
and this is this is not saying one is better than the other. I am saying it's more of a challenge is in the show you can only have a roster of named characters like for each character that you put on screen you have to like if you name them you have to give them some kind of story. They can't just like pop up and then move on. Whereas like in a book they can give you like I walk into a room and I see five Aes Sedai and I list their names. But unless you recognize them on site or give the main character dialogue of their names, like you can't do that. So, and the, the double edged sword of that is if you have a dark friend or somebody like an evil component, you have to, you have to name them. So like, like you can't just have like a mysterious one. You know what I mean? Like all the, these black Aja, the dark friends, they all have names and they all get named in the show. So, I mean, just, just for reference or just as, just as an example, they've name dropped, uh, Cad Swain and Galad and a couple of other people that haven't even been on screen yet. And for all we know, like for all anybody knows every single one of those could be dark friends and it's horrifying because they have to name the characters so that we know who they are. Yeah. Pretty and true. and uh, it's just a challenge for the show, right? Like if I, if I walk into a room in a book and I list a bunch of names, no big deal, but you can't do that on a show. They walk into a room with a bunch of people. You have no way of knowing who they are. You know what they look like, but you don't know who they are. Anyways, um, I have one of men's visions pulled up and I have a, I have a hot take, uh, cause I don't recognize this, uh, facial stuff going on. I don't know what this is. Um, so this is when, um, like Matt and men are hanging out at the bar or whatever. Yeah. And she goes, she goes to sleep and it's right before Ishamaya, like, intrudes on her dreams and uh this guy looks like he's from a country called shara who is uh big on body tattoos so if they stick with this it's gonna be sick because like if those guys show up when they're supposed to show up you're gonna be like hey i remember when mike brought that up that they're hinting at it this early this is just like a, a very brief vision in a dream that men had in season two halfway through so this would be sick uh, yeah anyways um Shamael again oh anyways I like you said before we started, Matt didn't have much going on. Just some nah. bullshit. Um, so, go ahead. Moraine's nephew, her son, right there, he's marrying the queen. Um, I don't know if I have a picture of Barthanis. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he's not in this episode. Okay. She just said it. The mom did. Uh, oh. And I was just thinking, like... I'm confused because I thought there was already a queen and you know obviously she has a daughter because uh, she's in the White Tower with Egwene at the moment so I'm just thinking like how is this young dude is mm. this young dude marrying two, two different cities okay I thought you said okay I was under the impression that there was one queen that ruled the land um, up into like the border of, uh, you know. Now, and this is like the the country, city, kingdom structure is um, is about as complex as it can be. So this is the city of Kyrian that um, I can't remember her name. Moraine's sister. This is Kyrian yeah, that they're in. Elaine mm -hmm. 
is the daughter heir of Andor. And that's yeah. Andor is the country and Camelin is their is their home city, I guess. Okay. So uh, K- Camelin and Kyrian, they they totally sound similar. Like I don't fault you for that. Plus there's so many places with their own kingdom and their own ruler and blah blah blah. It's easy to get it all mixed up. I mean, because remember, Loghain was from um, whatever his... He was taking over his town. Yeah, what was uh, it, Qatar? I don't... It's not It's not immediately popping into my brain, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Yeah. It's... Um, it's neither here nor there. It's just a little... No, I'm just trying to... Thing that I, just trying to demonstrate how complex the, the world is, so... Yeah. Um it was okay. uh Gil- Gildon. Gildon. Yeah. Yeah, so like if I zoom out on the map, uh, I see one I'm not going to name them all, but there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11, 12. There's 14 cities or 14 big big like areas that have their own like government structure. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Uh, but that was a that was a good question. I mean, a, a a lot of people probably thought the same thing and had to go back and like look for that. So. Yeah. Um, I did like the way they did this scene to kind of demonstrate, like I think what they were, uh, trying to accomplish in this scene is to demonstrate the uh, the quote-unquote agelessness of the Aes Sedai. And um, because this is like her s- steward or whatever, and then like Moraine's sister is clearly looks older. So like I, I appreciate that they... Yeah, they, I, I appreciate that they set the scene up to demonstrate like what you know, whatever mechanism keeps them young is, uh, it works. Yeah. And I think they even pushed it further when they showed a portrait of them two together and you're like, Oh, okay. They're sisters. Oh, she's an older sister. I mean, you don't know the age gap. You probably assume they're decently close. And then you see a portrait and Moraine looks like she's already 16 and her younger sister looks like she's six. And you're like, Oh, they look a whole decade apart from each other right so this is a big age gap i think they did a good job and showing like just throughout this episode all the stuff that she she basically not not forsaken but uh she'd missed out on her her whole life of her family she had she ditched it all word, like forfeited that forfeited it yeah in a way you know and and like you hear about her older her younger sister talking about how the dad was always waiting on her to come back and save everything and she never did right um but just hearing that like to moraine you know it's just a blink of an eye a lifetime and to them it is their entire life that she's pretty much missed out on uh, right i would I, um... I feel like that came across well I would like to I would like to point out that um this is somewhat of a plot hole since we don't actually know how old this lady is like she does look older but she should still only be in her like mid 30s like she shouldn't be this old So what Marine's like in her 40s? Yeah, like barely. Like 40 yeah. to 50. Uh, depending on depending on when she got done with her tr- like like basically the they got done with uh, the White Tower and became Aes Sedai like when they were like twenty and then yeah. she, and then Moraine spent twenty years looking for Rand so like realistically this this sister shouldn't look this old but you know it's I'm just, that's really just like a unnecessary nitpick. I just, something about the way she looked kind of threw me off and I was trying to figure out why. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, you go back and you watch Seinfeld and look at George Costanza, and that's what 29 years old looked like back in the 90s. Good Lord. <laughs> he didn't. He, uh, he got to his age. I got mistaken for a 22-year-old today. Well, they were fucking lying to you. I can promise you that. That's rude. It's not nice. It's the truth, buddy. When you say that. Sometimes the truth hurts. You say that, but maybe uh, maybe you're just jealous that you're not going to age this wonderfully. <laughs> I'm gonna age like fine wine, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. I hope so. Thank you. I hope so too. Don't. This uh, lifelong baby face is going to pay off someday. <laughs> Just be proud of it since you can't grow a beard. I try. I try my best. I uh, I put my beard into two, like two ponytails and put bands on them and then sent it to my kids and my wife. None of them have spoken to me since then. I'll be scared of them. Gave him nightmares. <laughs> nah, my daughter responded and she's like, you should put it in, you should dip it in glitter next time. Like put glitter in your beard. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Easy kid. Uh, so man, I, I forgot where I was at. Um, we're just kind of wrapping up some characters that didn't really have a whole lot. Um, talking a bit about Moraine and her sister. Um, you know, she goes to visit Logan. That's and, true. Uh, you know, offers him a way out that he seeks if he'll train uh, Rand in return. Right. So, you know, you kind of see her working behind the scenes, trying to help Rand from a distance without directly involving herself. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I kind of like. I like seeing this side of Moraine. I like seeing her kind of try to set the stage and pull the strings from behind the curtain. Um, you know, and let kind of Rand fall into it on his own. Little does she know that uh, Lucifer is sleeping in the bed with him. That's right. And... Uh, and boy, would she be hard to push out of bed. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to get to the end of this uh, episode. Oh, There's some juicy oh, stuff. Oh, I got screenshots. I got screenshots. Um, so yeah, like uh, Moraine's manipulating Loghain to try to... At first, she's trying to figure out where Rand is, uh, but she's also like manipulating Loghain into uh, basically offering him death if uh if he helps her which i thought was you know kind of mean but i guess it just depends uh and then she quick little what's that quick little side note uh that i really appreciated was how moraine went around the town basically like flaunting her asadai kind of attitude and status around mm -hmm. nobody would answer her then she goes back and her little sister is like, oh, I know this person you talked to, this person, and this person. And if you want this information, you got to ask me. I try. I got these streets. I think I got a good screenshot of her face, of the older sister or the younger sister, basically yeah. like, who, whose town are you walking around? Guess what? It's mine. Hey, hold on real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. This stream is sponsored by nobody. However, I do like refresh water from United Supermarkets out in West Texas. So, don't dox me. Butchered my boy. Pop. 
Hopper. So, since it's just me here talking to myself while I wait for Chad to get back, we have seen, um, oh, here he is. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's all right. I was just talking to myself. And we just had, uh, some Amazon packages get delivered. The dude was, like, buzzing up our door. Wouldn't stop buzzing it. I heard that. Usually they don't do that. They'll, like, buzz it once and then they'll leave it. Yeah. So, he buzzed it again. I was like, I don't want Anna to go out there late at night, you know. Somebody's buzzing it multiple times. You don't know who it is. <laughs> right. So. All right. Back to. Uh, let's see. I got our I yeah. got our bald boy on the screen at the moment. <laughs> bald boy. Yeah. That's uh. That's when crazy. It... I got a friend that looks exactly like him. Oh uh, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Like they like I identical. Like if something happened to Josha, you could send the send uh Amazon his name. But like I got a hundred percent. He would have a German person. accent, but hundred percent. Is that your buddy that came in for your wedding? Yeah. Nice. Let me see if. I... Nice. Right, so uh, what's the uh, what's the move here? Um, well, this is when the inn burns down, and I think uh, Celine is trying to get him out of the city, or he thinks he needs to leave. I don't remember. And then, oh yeah, he he's leaving. No, she was leaving. She's leaving and invites him. Yes. Yeah, look at that hair, man! Wow intense it is that's the devil right there how dare you she's a good woman how dare I? is she she's sure a, about she's the one she's the hero of the story didn't you know spoiler alert i mean she does have a good side to her when it comes to him <laughs> um this is them like going to the cabin or whatever Mm -hmm. And they're mostly like, they're mostly talking. And um, I was trying to find. This, this is it. This is where the, I got a picture of the fade peeling itself out of the shadow. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty sick. Like I, I enjoyed the visuals there scene was done really well I did as well uh, and then uh, Rand decides to uh, not try to not try a sword fight <laughs> you can fuck that fade up pretty quick um, I did I did want to say that like I could see where the comment came from from uh, TikTok that you mentioned like a while back where like the weaves portrayed on screen are are a decent indicator of like the strength and finesse of the of the channeler because like if you mm -hmm. compare if you compare this scene to like what Ishamayo is doing it's it's almost night and day like these weaves of fire are big they're they've got gaps in them they're not in a perfect mm -hmm. like helix or curve or anything they're just they're basically chaos and you go back and look at a shamayos and they're clean and smooth and not a lot of fluff on the outside it's very tight and going right where they need to go like i could see the I could see the argument and if the if the visual effects team did that on purpose then bravo good for them 
makes sense for sure um what i was curious was is i mean you got to break this down on a couple layers like this isn't just like serve tea on a platter i feel like this right here is a bit of an onion like it's got layers to it okay like obviously hint one another fade another fade attack around a dark friend let's just add that to the list mm -hmm. secondly she told rand that he was behind him because rand didn't know that the fade was there she called out to him and caused him to turn around which makes me think like you know is she is she on his side did she not want the fade to get him which would make sense because she loves him more than she loves the shamayel and the dark one I, th I think at this moment based on my understanding and or she wanted ran to put the fade down she wanted to see him in that position kind of force his hand into that fight I think it could be all of that or here's another alternative it's uh or or I guess a more broad question is who can tell the fades to attack somebody I mean it yeah I could, it could have been a Shameo, but if all forsaken can do it then she could have done it to herself just to try to provoke Rand like you said you know, to try to lean into that, that theory more. And I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. Um, your, your guess is as good as mine. We know what the, we know what the end of this episode looks like. And we know what, uh, what she tries to justify like right after this. This, this bitch is an actress. That's what I put in my notes right here. Man. It's like L L Lanfear is a damn actress, acting like she didn't know he could channel. Yeah, she like holds his when she's sitting there. She holds his face. She's like, that. I forgive you. Poor little damsel. Oh, oh, the uh, lies. Uh, oh, the lies. Oh, you can do that, you monster. Amazing. Bitch. No, don't hold back. <laughs> Wow. She knew the whole damn time. Also, another thing that I noticed. Okay. Landfear has clear weaves. Hmm. Interesting. We can get to that here in a little bit. I don't exactly remember the moment. I think that was uh when she heals herself. Um, is it when um, she heals herself or when she gets to the like um where she's trying to bust Rand out? Maybe it's maybe it's then. I just remember. I, I mean, I have it in my notes. I don't remember the specific moment. Um, but yeah. If you have it in your notes, then it should have been here somewhere. Yeah, um, it's a. I mean, it's definitely at the end. It's one of the betrayal. last things to happen. Betrayal. Here she is trying to get. You know, trying to get a little. She's trying to go for a ride on the dragon. Dog. Uh, and that, uh, that vein popping out in her forehead is everything you need to know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hot and heavy in there. It is. And then she leans back to, I'm assuming, take her shirt off, and Moraine kills the mood. What a cock block. Because uh, land fear is definitely a mood. So. Yeah. It's like, uh,. It's like being 16 again, you know? I know. You're in there. You're working it up. You spit in the riz. Next that's, thing you know, your mom walks in. That's right. Didn't I tell you to keep this door open? I told you to keep this door open. By the way, <laughs> I you told want some, you to keep this door open. You want some Hot Pockets? <laughs> yeah. Hand, oh, oh. My favorite was uh, hand, check. hand check. Hand check. Oh, man hand check get your hand out from under them covers like all right but i'm gonna put them back like you think a hand check yeah, as soon as you walk away it's, going <laughs> think right a, back in. it's just uh you, you must not remember being a kid and getting interrupted there ain't nothing stopping you yeah. once the boulders rolling yeah. uh no sorry. but sorry mom on a different note Mar Mar moraine is is motherfucking savage yeah she like no uh, powers she stabs her through the heart and then uh, slits her throat. Yeah. 
Like, there's, there's a whole lot of BDSM going on in this room right now. Then then you get Rand choking Moraine up against the wall. This is uh this is turning into a, not a PG rated podcast right here anymore. They had to uh they I'm sure they had to like do some color effects to take the blush out of uh the, of uh her cheeks because you know Ranch just got her pinned up against the wall. A little, little stud muffin right I'll there. I'll show you who's boss. Bow before the dragon. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this scene was really good. I enjoyed it. Like the yeah. ang- the anger that he showed. Like clearly, jo- Josh's acting is <laughs> great. No, it was. Yeah. Uh, All jokes aside, this was really well done. And I think it was great for the episode because it started with a bang with a Shamael breaking land for free. Mm -hmm. And then you get this moment where, I mean, as a first time watcher, I knew something was up with this girl with Celine. I didn't, you know, I'm not a book reader. I didn't know about Forsaken and all that extensively. Uh, I thought a Shamael was like the only bad guy in this or like the pinnacle of evil. Little did I know. Uh, but yeah, anyways, just seeing that in the, in the beginning and then leading up to this moment, such a like smack in the face that you realize this girl that's been, um, you know, sliding in the DMs of our dragon here. So you didn't, is, uh, you didn't have any suspicions leading up to this point? No, I said I had suspicions. I just didn't know to what extent. Like, oh. like what I was saying was I didn't know about Forsaken. Right. Like I knew something's up with this girl, but I don't know in what capacity she's involved or evil or what part she has to play. But obviously it's something because she's, it's just some girl that's super involved with the main character out of nowhere. Right. You know. She's important, but we don't important know. Part to play. Yeah. And she's in Kyrian, which in that episode, you know, they're showing like the game of houses and stuff like that to kind of add some, yeah. add some randomness to it. And kind of now we really don't know who this chick is. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I get it. Good, good deflection on the show's part. Um, yeah, definitely. Then uh, this man. On my on my rant, this is this statement right here is uh, gonna impact the entire show. So, like when we get to the really? end of when we get to the end of season two, this is gonna be part of the discussion of how this statement right here really screws up the part of the part of the premise, like you killed her. Oh, because I, I haven't, I couldn't. Are you trying to tie that in with a Shamael in the end? No. But okay, I'm I'm just the, confused as to why this is a problem. The the Forsaken are not immortal, and they can't heal themselves any better than I said I can. At least not in the book. Okay. Like being able to kill them is like part of the part of the story, like. Like they're not they're not immortal. They're scary. They're ancient. They're very powerful, mm-hmm. but they're killable. Like it's not easy by any means, but at no at no point are these people invincible. They just feel that so, way. A Forsaken, if some peasant was to walk up and put a sword through their chest, would that kill a Forsaken? Some random peasant? Sure. Okay. It's not likely to happen, but yeah. No, like, for sure. You know. Yeah, they. they but die. I'm just wondering, would they need some kind of one power to kill them? Kill them? Huh. No, they're just they're really strong. Like they, yeah, they know a lot. They have they do things that other channelers couldn't do, and part of their stick is uh, because they've been alive for so long they know how risky it is to be um uh in the middle of the pack so to speak so like 
they don't want to be like some of them want to be like in a ruling position some of them want to be like advisors some just want to hide like they all have their own individual no. personality of how they survive the everyday risks and the one power is pretty much instantaneous so like if they felt like they were in danger they would fuck shit up yeah so okay. Anyways, it's it's not a this is not a complaint. This is something that needs to be discussed when we get to the end of the show and figure out how they're going to handle this in season 3. Gotcha. Um well, I'm waiting for you to give props to something that happens here in the last few minutes of the show that was a complaint of yours in the past that they corrected or in this example did right. Are you thinking about something specific that I mentioned yes. or what? You uh you were not a fan of them using the one power with their hands. Rand killed that fade without lifting a finger. It's true. It's a good point. Nah, it's a good So it's there. It's, good it's in point. the show. Yeah. I mean it's a good point. And then we see uh to add on to that, we see Lanfear do it later. Spoiler alert, she's not dead. So, um, But we see her do it when she's walking through the village. Stuff's just blowing up left and right. She's not doing anything. Super dope. Super dope. This had the, like I said yesterday, probably the best start and best finish to any episode. Until I get to the end of season two. Yeah, do you like the last episode? Uh, I was just thinking I really remember enjoying the end of season two, so I wouldn't be surprised if I get super stoked and get hyped up by watching one of those episodes. But I do, if thus far, and, and from what I can remember, this has been the best start and finish to an episode that I can think of in the show. You know? Yeah. Because there's some lullable ones here in the middle. You know, that kind of like a, a filler episode or really not action packed or have a lot of suspense. You know, they're just building up the story in the background of the world. And, you know, it's not a whole lot of things coming to a point. But something like this, you know, this is episode four for four episodes for for a month. You've been watching this new chick, you know, who you have no idea about. And, you know, all of a sudden you find out. This bitch is Satan. She's not a nice lady. And no, she's not. But uh, she tricks me because I hear her talk about the dragon. I'm like, just give her a chance, dog. Just give her a chance, Ran. That's all she wants. That's How do you know it's not going to be different this time? It's all, it's all she wants. Just give her a chance. I don't, <laughs> I don't see the problem. Just give her a chance. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, even, you know, if, I would be mad too if somebody stabbed me in the chest, you know? Uh, that's a perfectly <laughs> rational feeling. Just, you know, yeah. for, just give her another chance, you know? Your 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 eyes to die chick messed up, you know? Get rid of her. Yeah. Tell her she's banished. Give, give Selena a chance. She loves you, bro. The only one that truly loves him. That's true. The only one that's alive that truly loves him. Since he killed his own wife. What a sad life. Ileana. Oh, I can't. I hope they do that. There's. There's. <laughs> Luz Theron was married to a, a woman named Ileana who he kills when he goes mad. And uh, yeah. when uh, like there's a form of flashback that happens and Luce Theron is, is uh, like the voice actor that does the, that does the audio book. He like really gets into it. He's like, Ileana, my love, Ileana. Hell yeah. And it, it's so funny. Uh, well, a lot of people get mad at it, but it's great. Um, I want more deets. I want more deets on the backstories between Landfair and Luce Theron. Uh, I hope the show 
digs around in that a little bit as she continues in the future seasons. And I'm also just excited to get to the end of this season so we can uh, talk about all the other Forsaken. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I'm interested in is I want to I want to talk about the other Forsaken. I want to talk about I want to take like the groups of people that we know about like the Wolf Brothers and the Aiel and the White Cloaks. Like I want to take like the different groups that we learned about and talk about where we you know what we think is going to happen in season three uh you know based on what we learned and i've got i do have a hot take when we get close to the end about um about where the show's going in general terms um not not related to what i know from the books just just from watching the show um there's some clues in the background that I'm interested in talking about. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Next week, or next time we discuss is episode five, and we get to see a lot of Sean Chan. And... Should get to see Landfair chasing Rain and Moraine. We get to see... We get to see some Aiel, like Perrin. Perrin mm. saves saves the Aiel. Oh, chip. it's that episode. And uh, and then Rand gets to go to uh, Moraine's house. And uh, yep. yeah, and then when Rand goes to sleep, he sees Lanfear in one of my favorite outfits I've ever seen on television. Um. So. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm I uh Ooh. I did I did notice while I was looking through my pictures that I don't quite have season or episode eight done, but I do have all the other ones done up to up through seven. So okay. uh whenever whenever you have time, I know you got school and, and a wife and all that, but whenever you have time we can keep on pushing through this. And yeah. um I still don't understand what happened to my internet yesterday because this is about the time that it screwed up, isn't it? Like a little, like around mm -hmm. eight o'clock your time. Yep, I was. I, Hold on, let's uh, let me let me try to do something, and we'll see if it's gonna mess up again. Are you gonna pull up Amazon Prime while we're while we're yep. talking? I'll do it too. Pull up. I don't think it is, but it just it doesn't make any sense how it would affect my my internet. No, I would just think it like of it would affect me on my end, which would kind of throw yours a little bit for a loop, or just maybe make it harder to receive my signal. But um, yeah, but I don't. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to test it, right? Like testing it is fine. I just yeah. like logically that doesn't. That doesn't jive for me. Nothing, nothing you do short of attacking my network should affect my ability to stream. Because gotcha. uh, essentially, what I had was like a gigantic lag spike that my computer couldn't recover from. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Where am I at in the so? I have I have 53 minutes left in episode 8. So I'm not quite finished. Yeah. Well, I'll probably get to episode 5 someday this week and then uh yeah. I think everybody gets a long weekend, so I think we could probably get a an episode or two in there now that we're not focused on uh Avatar. Would be cool to see some uh some shorts soon yeah i don't know what your your plan was with that yeah i enjoy them my plan is to uh get organized and do them do them right so 
I'm I'm working on it. Uh, us streaming yeah. two two days in a or technically three days in a row, I guess. Us streaming three days in a row kind of kind of uh, th threw me off. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. I was I was planning on working on shorts today and yesterday, but it's this is a a pleasant surprise. Don't uh don't mistake me. So um Ooh. I've got lots of material to work on. I just uh like the way the the way the video editing works is kind of a pain. Uh, I would love to do it on stream like just as kind of a like a tutorial for for people because like learning from scratch sucked a lot and it took me like two months to figure it out and like i would like to do that but unfortunately i have to have like the the live the live show or um the recorded recorded show on the editor and as i'm scrolling through there i'm sure i'll get a copyright strike immediately So that's unfortunate. Uh, I probably could, you know, now that I think about it, if I took a, I, c I could do it. I could do a little bit on stream. I'd have to do like some of the, the actual show cuts um, off camera, but I could, I could make some shorts on stream just to kind of demonstrate what all goes into it. If you're interested in watching something like that, or at least yeah. skimming through it, have it in the background while I, get mad at myself <laughs> <laughs> that'd be funny i'll find one and be like oh this would be good and then it takes me 45 minutes to get through it and it's like ah, pull my hair out so i could uh i could only imagine how frustrating that would be yeah it's it's more that i feel like it should take less time and i know it's like a process thing like if i can figure out the process i feel like there's you know i almost typed in the meme the meme words of uh this one weird trick to make your video editing faster like i almost typed that in to try to find some kind of solution um I but I, typed it in. I how do you know it's, it's not out there I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe it uh, also just so you know like the uh, desire for pay to win is strong and uh, the video editor has like an AI like video maker and I'm so tempted to at least try it <laughs> but you have to pay yeah you have to pay for it I have no idea what the quality is imagine if it was the uh, career changing I doubt it. AI is smart. It's yeah, I doubt it too. It's not that smart. But yeah, imagine. Imagine. You know, you haven't once asked me what any of these little stickers are above my head. Uh, I assume they are book characters from The Will of Time. Uh, no, you would be wrong. Those, okay. those oh. are all uh, the book that I gave you. These are like the stickers that you get as part of the package from uh, Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter. And so oh. I, I, these are like what you're seeing are my physical stickers that I put over this uh, green screen behind me and took pictures of them and then uploaded them to the computer and washed out the background and threw them on the, threw them on the screen. Oh yeah. So, uh, the little, the girl in the green that doesn't change is, uh, her name is Tress. So, it's one of my, a, f a fan favorite for the Sanderson community. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, anyways, I don't know what else you're planning on doing. I, I need to, uh, I need to eat. If I don't eat now, I'm going to have heartburn and not be able to sleep tonight. No, I was just uh, waiting to wrap up this episode. Now I'm going to uh, cruise on in there with my wife, hang out for the night, maybe uh, catch another episode of Will of Time. I try not to do that at night because I like to, I like to be able to relax and not feel like I have to take notes while I watch something. So we uh, we might dip our toes into Shogun. Yeah, 
That's coming up for me. The uh, the book at least because uh, how many uh, how many yeah. episodes is the show? Uh, I think it's ten episodes this season. Okay. Um, I think they're at four right now, four or five. Uh, I'm a few. I'm a few days late. I, I haven't. I've been pushing it off. Um, but yeah, I think they're right around the halfway point. Okay. Well, what I was getting at is, uh, what I was getting at is, I could. I could uh, put off the the book show gun. If you, I mean, if you feel like there's stuff to talk about in the show, I could try to watch it after I'm hundred percent. <laughs> but even just like I was explaining to you, it's better to watch the show first and appreciate the show for what it is before you go read the book. That way, the book only adds depth to what you know, rather than take away. I see, I see your face. Keep smirking. Po- poker face. I don't know what you're talking about. That's not a poker face, dog. It is. Uh, Sar- sarcasm. Is better, I think sarcasm is lost on some people. Yeah. Um. I I don't think you've had any series that you've watched first that you've enjoyed or or read I, first can you blame me i mean everything from will of time all the way to dr seuss's cat in the hat with mike myers what a disaster i don't know i think will of time's pretty pretty kick-ass i enjoy the show for what it is that and that's what i'm saying so see if you watch the show first you don't have that that stigma attached to it where it's like oh it's just, it, it's good but it's not this well, you don't have nothing to compare it to so you only get to enjoy it for what it is That's and fair. then when you go read the book you're like wow this is even better than the show but you're not shitting on the show you're just like wow i enjoyed the show and now i'm enjoying this more hmm. my glasses are like interfering with my green screen somehow. Yeah, I would change the subject too. It's distracted. Change the subject, man. I I get it, but I like to read. I like to read. I, I know you do. I mean, it's I'm not saying don't read it. I'm just saying why not enjoy it first? Because I'm selfish, Chad. I want, I want it all. I want all of it. Yeah. I want because you like to be that guy who's like, oh, yeah, I read the book. It's not as good as the book. Man, that's a given. But yeah, it's it's never better to not see something. Just get to close my eyes and imagine it in my head. People sword fighting and fucking with their clothes off. It's just so much better in my head. Yeah. (laughs) It is. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if uh, Altered Carbon is. a book because i really i really enjoyed that show uh yeah you said they fucked up season two so i'm never gonna watch it i just don't watch season two what do you mean watch season one waste of my time then watch season season one is a complete is a complete story it's great are you just uh being stubborn just because I don't know. I like I like to get invested in a in a story I know is gonna be sustained over a long period of time. Uh, I always feel let down when I watch a show and I get into it and I find out it's like a limited part series or something. And I'm like, damn, this this is a good show. Why would we just not do this forever? Yeah. Like uh, the show White Lions on Netflix. Hmm. I get it. The, the series concludes, it makes sense, the story kind of wraps itself up, but like, that show was dope as fuck. Why would we not do a second season? Good point. Um, I mean, but, like, also, if the show is that good, like, getting to experience it once is great. Like, if you've never seen Firefly, 
that's a great show like great show and i i wish they had made more but even that one season was worth worth the pain of not getting more yeah but why has it got to be pain hey man why they got to do that to you the pain the pain is uh is life in general man sometimes it's worth sometimes the pain is worth it True words, true words. No, if you uh, if you get an opportunity to watch Shogun, I would. I I do think that it is something that we could talk about. Definitely wouldn't be coming from a position of authority, because uh, I don't even speak Japanese. But uh, amateur, it would, be, it would be fun to uh, to get into. It'd be uh, fun just to try to see where the story goes together. Like, what do you pick from the episodes? What what are you getting at versus what am I getting? You know, are we on the right path? Are we getting to it before the end of the season? But if we don't get into it before the finale comes out, I'm probably going to lose a lot of steam on it. Because that's the fun for me of this show is trying to pick it apart and see where it's going. Yeah, I what I would like to do is watch. Um, is watch it all real quick because it says that you get the first month free. And then Hulu with with ads is eight dollars, and uh, just because I can afford eight dollars doesn't mean I'm gonna want to keep watching whatever's on Hulu for eight dollars a month. I already do that with Netflix and Amazon. So, yeah. um, is this like a thing where they release episodes every week or something? Yeah, they release it on, once or one episode a week. Um on Wednesdays I'm pretty sure. Okay, so at the start of, at the night? at the start of the month cuz we're almost there. So mm -hmm. like on on Monday the 1st uh maybe I can do my my free trial and watch it and uh or even better record what they have. And uh and then watch it. Yeah. Well, I could do that. I could catch up to where you're at and then we could discuss Yeah, I think I think you would enjoy it. Uh, I don't think it's something we got to do like this, where you know we're spending hours per episode. But you know, well, we, we get could, caught up, and then we want to do. I mean, we little, could talk. Like, uh, uh, we could know. talk about it before or after we have our episode discussion. I mean, yeah, like we're talking Let's about the will of time. 15, Twenty minute thing. Yeah, we can just talk about stuff that that we noticed. Yeah, you know, I whatever. All right. Well, but, uh, I'm, I'm I'm about to get off of here. As much yeah, as I, I got to wrap this up. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's going to be my plan. Is I'm going to at least snag the. I'm really tempted to wait till the season is over and just uh, uh, grab all the episodes all in one shot and then cancel my membership. Yeah. Such a piece of shit. I could spend the whole month down. Uh, capturing the hulu library if i wanted to i'm so glad you're saying this recording live they can't stop me i paid for the paid for the membership and it's a, a backup of material that i want to watch mm -hmm. Pay, I'm all paying. right mike we got to wrap this up bro all righty have a good night bye yes, Aunt. bye anna <laughs> See y'all later. Later, dude.